Drawing yourself as a cute witch is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it. Hey, hello, wonderful people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. Now just a quick note before we start in this video and this demo, I'm using the app Procreate on the iPad, but you can follow along with pretty much any drawing tools because we're mostly going to focus on the character breakdown itself, which you can do with really whatever tool you have. So let's jump straight into it. We're going to start with a rough sketch. So here, go ahead and create a new layer and rename that new layer to rough sketch. So the idea here is just to map out the general proportion of a character and create essentially a skeleton or a structure. It's not going to be about drawing anything pretty at all. So if you have a bunch of messy lines, it really, really doesn't matter. That's totally okay. Here. And since it's a sketch, you can use any color and any brush you want. I usually like to sketch with a neutral gray. And in terms of brushes here for the sketch, you can really pick whatever you're comfortable with. Now in this video, as usual, I'm always going to suggest a few different options. So free brushes that come with Procreate. I'm going to give you tips on finding similar brushes, but in different software. And then then I'm going to also suggest brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now these brushes are not essential at all, you can follow along with free brushes or different brushes, whatever you want, it doesn't matter. But these are the brushes I created for myself when drawing illustrations for children's books. So if you want to check them out, they will be linked in the description below, but again, not essential at all. So for sketching, again, any brush you're comfortable with is totally okay. If you're working with free Procreate brushes, that could mean going in the sketching pack and picking something like the HB Pencil. If you're working in a different software, again, anything you know you're comfortable with or something with pencil and a name should work really well. And if you do have my illustration bundle, go ahead and pick the sketching brush. So no big surprise here. So we're going to start by loosely mapping out a circle for the head of the character. And then we're going to roughly take the height of that circle put it down and that's going to help us measure the height of the body. So you can just draw a little line right there. From there, we're going to draw a bit of a slightly curved line, which is going to be essentially the spine, and that's going to help us map out the other elements. So on the top part of the spine, probably the top half, roughly, we're going to draw this kind of weird box that has a bit of a notch in the bottom. So kind of a rectangle like this. And then the notch. And then we're just going to add a side to turn it into a box. So essentially this is going to be the rib cage of the character. I know it looks crazy, but bear with me. We're also going to draw a bit of a sphere in the notch, which is not really a body part, but that's the part of the torso that would be bendy. That's the sphere. And then for the pelvis, we're going to draw a half sphere. So starting with just a U shape, and then since we're at an angle, we're going to draw a bit of an oval like this. So from there, we're going to draw one of the leg, which is going to be made of two ovals. And each oval is going to be the same height as the head or the body because they're the same. So again, you can just take your fingers and roughly use that as a guide. And then place the leg however you want it to be. Then same thing for the bottom part of the leg. and then just adding a foot. Then for the arm, we're also going to use two ovals, but this time we're going to use the height of the rib cage as our guide. So just measuring that real quick and then putting that to the side to create the top of the arm. And then once more to create the forearm. And just like that, we have a very basic skeleton of our character. So from there, it's going to be very easy to add the different elements around it and move all of this super simple shapes as needed to just tweak the position if you need to. So let's move on to the broom, which is going to help us place the other arm and the other leg. Now the broom, she's sitting on it. So we can just draw the broom here.
So now that we know the broom is here, we can also draw the other arm. Now the other arm, I want it personally to be holding onto the broom, but kind of behind the legs. So again, using the same kind of ovals, roughly the same length, I'm just going to place it right here this time. We're barely going to see it. And maybe we can see a little bit of the finger poking out right here. Now we can also place the other leg. So the other leg is going to be mostly hidden. So I'm not even going to bother drawing the ovals. I'm just going to kind of mimic this shape, but slightly behind. So just like that. Now, if we move on to the face, we're not going to draw all the details, but we do have to refine a few elements as well as adding the hat and the hair. So let's go ahead and add a slightly curved vertical and a slightly curved horizontal line, so what I call the plus sign, which is going to help us see the direction of the head as well as map out the main elements. Now if you want, you can also refine the shape of the head. I always like to turn it into this kind of bean shape. So essentially, instead of having just a circle, it's going to go inwards where the horizontal line is. I also like to map out the ear at this stage, so just a little bit of a circle aligning with the horizontal line. And now that we have a better idea of what the head and the face is, we can easily draw the hat. So the hat, I'm going to have a very classic thin brim that you would have on a witch hat. But since she's going forward, we can imagine that there is essentially this motion like this, which is creating wind going that way. So if it's a thin brim, it might be folding in this direction instead of just being straight up like this. It's not going to happen here because she's holding it, but we're going to draw the hand. And here I'm going to keep the hand very simple, just this kind of weird <laughs> little shape right here. And then the hat, you can really draw any shape hat you want. I'm going to go with the very, again, super classic witch hat. So just drawing this shape right here. And then adding a floppy triangle at the end. I feel like my angle here is a little bit weird, so I'm just going to essentially draw the same brim, but as a different angle, see if that's better. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. Now for the hair here, you can draw what I'm drawing, but you can also customize it to be you, be your kid. I know I have a lot of parents following this channel, so if you want to draw your kid as a witch, that could be really fun. So customizing the hair is a really easy way to customize your character. Now I do have a bunch of hair drawing tutorials, like drawing short hair, drawing curly hair. So I'm gonna link those in the video description below if you feel like you need help customizing the hair. But otherwise, just try to outline the general shape of the hair and you can really exaggerate it. For example, I know my hair is long and it's also kind of a, I don't wanna say curly cause it's not wavy, but with ringlets. <laughs> so I know that in general, the shape is going to be this long blob going backwards, and I'm going to have some little twists and turns in it. So that's what I'm trying to keep in mind. So just find a few different elements that you think really define the hair of the person you're trying to draw, and just keep those in mind and try to put that on paper. So here the goal is really not to draw individual hair. We just want to roughly map out where the hair is going to, and just a general outline of that hair shape you're going to have. Great! Now honestly this was the hardest part of the entire video, just mapping out the basic shapes and the basic structure. So if you've made it this far, just give yourself a little pat on the back. Um, <laughs> it's going to be easier from now on. Now before we move on to cleaning up our sketch and creating the line art, we might want to go ahead and just play with the structure a little bit. Which is the beauty of drawing everything with super basic shapes like this, is it's really easy to change either the angle or the proportions of them. And so for that, what you can do is use any kind of selection tool you have in your software and then draw a section around any shape you want to move. I feel my head is a little bit too big for my character here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my selection tool to freehand. And then I'm going to draw a quick selection around all the basic shapes that I want to change. And then using the arrow tool, I can easily just move these basic shapes around resize them, rotate them, whatever I feel the need to do in order to get a structure that I'm happy with. 
So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to play with the basic structure that we have here for our character until you're super happy with it. And once you're done, we're going to meet up in the next step in which we're going to create our clean sketch and line art. Now this step is pretty much just like tracing because we already have the basic structure. We just want to go ahead and figure out which lines we want to use in our final illustration. So this step I find really fun. It's kind of relaxing. Now we're going to start by lowering the opacity of our rough sketch layer so we can just barely see it. I'm going to keep mine a little bit more opaque so you can see it in the video, of course. But in your case, lower the opacity as much as you can until the sketch pretty much just disappears. Then go ahead and create a new layer above your rough sketch and rename it to line art. If you don't feel super comfortable with going from a rough sketch like this to a line art, you could add one more step to the process in which you go ahead and just clean up your rough sketch so you have fewer lines. So either by erasing the messy lines in your rough sketch or just tracing over it before doing the line art. But if you feel confident or if you want to challenge yourself, we're going to move straight to the line art. So we're going to, again, pick the lines, but we're also going to add some details like the clothing. So for the line art, go ahead and set your color to anything dark that is not pure black and that has a little bit of hue to it. So I'm going to go with just, I don't know, a dark blue. It doesn't really matter here because later down the road, we're going to recolor the line art anyway. Now, in terms of brushes, you have a few different options, again, depending on the style you want your liner to be. So if you want more of a clean comic books kind of outlines, you would try to find some sort of an inking brush. So anything that has probably pen or inking in the name would work really well. But for this kind of illustration, I personally like to have textures in my outlines. So in that case, if you're working with free brushes that come with Procreate, you could stick with the sketching pack going with the 6B pencil. If you're working with a different software, you can, again, just stick with something that has pencil in the name. That should work really well. But if you do have my illustration bundle, we're going to switch from the sketching brush to the outlines brush. And the size of your outline here is really up to you. There's no one size fits all. It's going to depend on the size of your canvas, the kind of brush that you're using, as well as just the style of outline you want. So really the best way for you to find which size to use is just doing a few quick tests before moving on to creating the liner itself. Now, once you do know which size you want to use, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start tracing the liner itself. And for this, we're going to start with the face because we don't have anything on the face right now. And I do want to give you a few tips for drawing the facial features before just going loose and tracing the rest of the line art. So for this illustration, honestly, you can really customize the facial features to your own style or the person you're drawing, of course. But I'm going to keep mine very simple because I feel like it's a very busy illustration overall. So I'm just going to draw little dots for the eyes, aligning them on the horizontal line, of course. I'm going to add my traditional little <laughs> lash line like this. Then the nose, any shape nose you want, I'm going with just a regular C curve and I'm going to align that with the vertical and horizontal line. From there, we're going to draw the mouth. In my mind, my character is really happy. She's just having a blast. So I'm going to start by drawing this big smiley mouth, but I want it to be open. I really want her to be happy. So there we go. May even add some teeth at the top and a bit of a tongue at the bottom. And I'm also going to add some simple eyebrows. Now for the rest of the head, we have pretty much everything mapped out. So go ahead and trace that real quick. I'm going to do the same. And then I'm going to show you how to draw the dress. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you've watched this far in the video, please go ahead and leave a comment with the word moon. 
And if you're new on the channel, you might be a little bit confused with the secret password thing. Long story short, it's a bit of a game that we play in all my illustration tutorials. I hide a secret password for you to find and then comment. And that does a few things. First of all, it's just fun for me because you know me, you see my face in the intro, you hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you are. And whenever you leave a comment, no matter what the comment is, I get to sometimes see your face, sometimes see your name, and it's just really great to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel. So that's reason number one. Uh, the other reason is for you, and it is that the secret password does give me a lot of insight into how to edit and paste my videos better, and that helps me create better tutorials for you. So again, if you watch this far, just leave a comment with the word moon, and then we're going to keep going. So once you have the head, not the hair just yet, we're gonna move on to drawing the dress. Now the dress essentially is going to, for the top of the body, follow the torso we have, and then it's going to get flowy around the legs. So you can start by drawing any kind of like neck area as you want, and then we're just going to follow the lines we have, the guides we have to draw the torso. Now, if you're drawing your kid here, be very careful. Make sure they don't have as big of a bump at the front of the chest because that's just not going to look right. Then we can also draw the arm. You can have any kind of sleeve you want. You can have just short sleeves, so cutting it here and then drawing really just the arm itself. I want to have nice long sleeve with a loose end. So just following the base shapes pretty loosely. can also draw the wrist and the hand. Again, here I'm keeping them super simple because essentially the hand is just kind of flat on the brim of the hat. And you're probably gonna need here to erase some lines from where you drew the hat in the previous step. Now the other arm is going to be probably hidden mostly with the legs. So we're going to draw the bottom of the dress and the leg first, and then we're going to come back to this arm. Now the bottom of the dress, in my mind, it is a dress right above our knee that again is catching in the wind, but it's pretty thick fabric. So it still has a pretty strong shape and it kind of falls towards the bottom. So I'm going to draw this wobbly curve here. So again, the dress falls on the bottom, it goes over her knee, but then it's kind of catching in the wind at the back. And then I'm just going to connect those ends with her waist. So again here, her leg is right here. So this part is going to go over the leg. And this part here is just kind of flowing in the wind. And then it connects with the waist. I also like to draw this kind of ribbon around the waist. Then we're going to draw the underside of the dress or the other side of the dress that we're going to see kind of under here. Now moving on to the legs, we have pretty much everything we need for the leg. You can customize the shoes. I'm going with pretty simple boots with a little bit of a heel. 
So I'm just going to draw the top of the boot, then making sure the sides are slightly wider than the leg itself. And then a pretty simple foot shape. So just starting with the back and the heel, creating that little chunkiness. Then bring it down. And around to create the foot. And then we can draw the rest of the leg, so just over the oval that we had. So now that we have that, we can draw the missing arm, which is going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be essentially the sleeve. And then just having this little pokey hand part. Now moving on to the broom, we have everything we need for the broom, so I'm just going to let you trace that real quick. And last but not least, the hair. Now the hair again is going to totally depend on what you want your character to look like. So don't hesitate to pull up a picture of the person you're drawing. You can also look on Pinterest or Google to help you find the kind of hairstyle you want. Just remember in general, the movement again is going to be going in that direction because our character is moving forward. So the wind is going this way. So the hair is just going to catch in the wind. So that's really the only thing you need to consider. And keep it simple. Don't You don't have to draw every hair strand. Really focus on drawing the general movement of the hair. And then when we come back later and add the lights and the shadows, that's where we're going to refine the hair texture a little bit. So really now for the line art, just focus on the main shape and asking yourself how you can give that main shape movement to make your illustration interesting, to make your character look really alive. So let's take a little bit of a break from our character and let's just draw the background real quick because it's going to help us set the vibe for the colors we use on the character itself. So at this stage what you can do is either hide or delete the rough sketch. We won't really need it anymore. And then we're going to create a new layer, put it below everything we have so far and we're going to rename that new layer to background. And here I'm personally going for a nice dark night sky, so I'm going to pick essentially a really nice dark blue. 
Now for this tutorial, since this is more of an intermediate video, I'm going to encourage you to pick your own colors and I'm going to give you tips on how to do that. But if you don't want to pick your own colors, I'm going to give you the hex codes of the one I'm picking. As I go, I'm going to add it on the top of the screen right here. But again, here for the sky, just a nice dark blue, maybe more on the purple or indigo side than more the kind of aqua green blue. And we're just going to drop that on the background. Now this might be a little bit too flat for my liking at least, so I'm going to add a bit of a gradient towards the bottom. So just making this blue a little bit lighter. And then with really any brush, but pretty big size so that we can quickly paint, just coloring the bottom half of your piece. And we're going to use the smudge tool to blend that and create more of a gradient. So the smudge tool in pretty much every software is a little finger icon in Procreate is right here. And you could set your smudge tool to a soft brush if you want to have a smooth gradient. I like to have a bit of texture. So you could look for something that has charcoal in the name or just looking at a brush that seems like it has texture. It doesn't really matter that much. I personally like to use in the painting pack that comes to Procreate the stucco brush. And then with that, you can just go over and blend your background as desired. Now we're also going to add a moon, so go ahead and create a new layer above the background layer, rename it to moon. And here we're just going to pick a really nice bright orangey yellow, setting it to maximum brightness and pretty much middle of the way in terms of saturation. Here again, the brush doesn't really matter, I'm still using my Atlas brush that I use for creating the line art. And you're going to draw a big circle around your witch. Now, if you're working in Procreate, what you can do to create a perfect circle is draw a circle really roughly first, then holding your pencil on the screen and then tapping with another finger, which is going to create a perfect circle. And then if you just move your pencil on the screen, it's going to allow you to resize the circle as desired. Then go ahead and drop your color to fill in the circle. And feel free to move it around if you want to just change the position of it a little bit. And I personally want my moon to look like it's glowing. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to duplicate my moon layer. So if you're working in Procreate, you can just swipe your layer towards the left and then just like duplicate. And then we're going to set this new copy to the blending mode add. Now blending modes are usually with the opacity of your layer. So depending on the software you're using, it's going to be in a different location. In Procreate, just tap on the little N next to the check mark and then select add from the list. And from here, still with the top moon layer selected, we're going to add a bit of a glowing effect. For that, we're going to use any kind of blurring tool you have within the software. In Procreate, we're going to open up the adjustment panel here at the top and we're going to pick Gaussian Blur. And then we're just going to add a bit of blur. I don't want it to be too intense because that would look like the sun that's too bright. So something a little bit more like this. And maybe we can lower the opacity of that glow as well. So it's not quite as intense. And just so it's a bit easier and we don't get quite as confused, you can also rename that top layer to glow. So we have moon and then we have glow. So we can see the glow. Small little effect, but it makes a pretty big difference. Now we can also draw some stars. So just creating a new layer once more, renaming it to stars. Maybe using add as well as the blending mode. Maybe with lower opacity to start with because we knew for the glow we lowered it quite a bit. So maybe using around 40%, something like that. Otherwise, same color and the brush doesn't really matter. You can just go ahead and add some little dots here and there.
Now you could stop here if you want a clear sky. I'm going to add a few clouds in mine. So again, just creating a new layer above the moon, the glow and the stars. Renaming it to clouds. And for the clouds, I'm going to essentially color pick part of my background, probably more towards the top. And I'm going to make that color a little bit lighter and quite a bit more desaturated. So essentially we're going to end up with a grayish blue. And otherwise still with the same brush, we can just go ahead and draw some clouds. Now I like to draw clouds with a flat bottom and then a fluffy top. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do here. Making sure that the different fluffy parts are not all the same size. So you're gonna have some very small ones, some medium ones, they might be facing different directions. Because if you go ahead and make everything the same size, it just doesn't look super good. You can keep the clouds like this if you want. I think it might be cool to add a bit of transparency to them so we can see the moon through them. So again, just lowering the opacity of your layer a little bit, not a whole lot, probably in the mid 90s, like 94, 95, something like that. You can see already it's very subtle, but you can see the moon through it and it just makes the piece feel a little bit more interesting. Now I'm also going to add some dark clouds at the bottom just to balance the piece because the top is really dark and then the bottom here seems a little bit too open. So I'm going to create a new layer so that these clouds in the front don't have the transparency and I'm going to rename that one to dark clouds. And here I'm going to color pick again at the top and I'm going to mostly just focus on desaturating the color. So I'm going to keep the brightness pretty much the same, maybe a little bit lighter, but really going towards gray instead of dark blue. Otherwise, same thing here, I'm just going to draw the fluffy top of the cloud, so not the bottom. So essentially pretending that the bottom of the cloud is out of the frame. Now at this step, it's essentially like we're working with a coloring book. So what we're going to do is we are going to map out the different colors in our piece all on separate layers so that we can easily tweak them as needed. Now I personally like to start with the skin, but you could start with whatever you want. So just go ahead and create a new layer, making sure it is above any background element you have, but still below your line art. And rename that new layer to whatever element you're coloring. So again, I'm going to start with the skin. Now I know picking a skin color can be quite tricky, it can look really off, but since we're working with digital tools and we're drawing everything on separate layers, we can easily change the skin color as we go. So what I personally do when I have to pick a skin color is I just roughly go in the orange section and pick a pretty bright and desaturated skin color because that, that matches my skin tone. If you have a different kind of skin tone, you can just kind of bring your hand close to the color map and pick something that resembles it. it. It really doesn't need to be perfect at this stage. We're going to tweak it later. As long as you have something that can resemble skin, that's totally okay. Now in terms of brushes here for color blocking, we're just gonna pick the most basic round brush available in our software. So if you're working with free Procreate brushes, that could mean going in the airbrushing pack, picking the hard brush, and making sure that if you follow my watercolor videos, you bring the opacity of the brush back up to 100%. If you're working in a different software, just pick any base round brush that doesn't have any texture or any feathering, like the most basic round brush you have. If you do have my illustration bundle though, at this stage, you can go ahead and pick the base round brush. And all we're going to do here is outline really quickly 
the different shapes for which that color applied. And then we're just going to fill in the shapes. So we're just going to go ahead and repeat these steps for all the different elements we have. So we're essentially going to create a layer for the hair, a layer for the clothes, a layer for the broom. You get the idea. Whenever we're changing color, we're going to create a new layer. Then we're going to outline the shape on that layer and then we're going to fill it in with colors. So take all the time you need here, I'm going to keep my video going in the background so you can use it as a reference. And once we're done color blocking, I'm going to show you how to tweak the colors just to make sure you're really happy with your illustration before we move on to adding the lights and the shadows.
So once you have all the elements color blocked, it's super easy to go back and, for example, select a layer. I'm going to go with the skin layer and use any color adjustment tool you have in your software. So either a filter, something like curves, uh, color balance. I personally like to use in the adjustment panel in Procreate hue saturation and brightness. Now hue saturation and brightness is available in most software, so you should be able to find it in yours as well. And essentially from there, just playing with the sliders until you find something that you like. And you can do that for all the different layers you have. So for example, I feel like my hair might not be exactly how I want it to be. So hair layer, adjustment panel, or any other adjustment tool you have, hue saturation and brightness. So take all the time you need here to color block your main elements. And once you're done, we're going to add a bit of color variation, mostly on the skin, just to bring your character to life a little bit more. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the skin, rename that new layer to pink, and we're going to apply that layer as a clipping mask. Now clipping masks are available in most software, if you're not exactly sure where it is in your software, just google it, you should find it really easily. In Procreate, you just tap on the layer and then select clipping mask from the menu here. And what a clipping mask does is now everything we draw on this pink layer is going to stay within the skin layer. So what we can do here is color pick the skin color we ended up going with and making it a little bit more pink, so just going towards the red and maybe a little bit more saturated as well. And depending on if you want texture or not in your illustration, here you could pick a soft brush. So in Procreate that would be in the airbrushing pack, the soft brush. In other software, just finding a round brush that is super soft could totally work. But I personally like texture in my illustration again. So in that case, if you're like me, you might try to find more of a charcoal brush. In Procreate, there's literally a charcoal pack, so you could just pick the willow charcoal here. If you do have my illustration brushes though, go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. And with that brush, whether it is the soft brush or any kind of charcoal or textured brush in our dirty pink, we're just going to loosely, gently paint over the top of the ear both cheeks and maybe a little bit of the nose as well. So super simple, but it really does help bring the character to life. Now we can also do this on what would be the fingers. So right here, right here, as well as the knee. And this is a technique that you can use to add color variation to whatever element. So you could have a gradient in the clothes, you could have a pattern in the clothes. So just creating a bunch of different clipping masks above the different color blocking elements you have, and then adding that color variation. So let's say I want to have color variation in my hair, which is usually something I do because my hair is long. If it's just one color, I find it kind of boring. So again, I would just create a new layer above my hair layer. I'm going to rename it to gradient. And I'm going to apply it as a clipping mask so that whatever I paint on this gradient layer stays within the hair shape. Then I'm going to color pick my hair color. Probably going to make it lighter, maybe a little bit more orange as well. And then just brush my new color towards the bottom of the hair. So feel free to take all the time you need here to add as much color variation as you want. And once we're done, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be quickly recoloring the line art. That's totally optional. If you want, you can also just skip ahead to the next section in the video, which is going to be adding shadows and lights. So if you want here, you could recolor your line art so that the illustration is a little bit softer. This is what I like to do at least. And so for that, what you could do is just go over the line art that you already have, being very careful. That could totally work, but that would take a lot of time. So what you might want to do instead is activate what is called alpha lock on your line art layer, which in Procreate you can do by just swiping the line art layer towards the left with two fingers or selecting alpha lock from the menu. Now, just like clipping mask, alpha lock is available in most software. So if you're not sure where it is in yours, just go ahead and Google it. And with alpha lock activated, now whatever we draw on the line art layer is going to stay within the line art that we already had. That means we can go ahead and quickly just color pick the different colors we have for the different elements, make it a little bit darker or quite a bit darker depending on what you want, and then just brush over the line art to recolor it. 
So feel free to pause the video here, take all the time you need to recolor your line art if you want to recolor it. And once you're done with that, we're going to meet up in the next step in which we're going to add the shadows, the lights, which is really going to make the illustration come together super, super nicely. first thing we're going to do in terms of shadows and lights is actually add a vignette effect to help bring the piece together and also make it a little bit more moody. But before that, it might be helpful to just group the different layers we have because right now our file is a little bit messy. So in Procreate, the way to group layers is just selecting them by swiping them towards the right with one finger and then tapping the group option here at the top. Oops, I didn't select the line art, so I'm just going to add it real quick. And then from there, you can quickly collapse the group and rename it to character. Same thing with the background. So just selecting the different background layers we have, tapping on group, collapsing the group and renaming that to background. Now from here, we're going to create a new layer above everything. So above the character group, above the background group, and we're going to rename that new layer to vignette. And similarly to what we did for the moon and the glow, we're going to use a blending mode, but we want the vignette to be darker. So instead of going with a blending mode like add, we're going to go with a blending mode called linear burn, which is really good for shadows. And we're already right out of the gate, just going to put it at 50%. And here we're just going to color pick roughly in the middle of our sky. So kind of like this. And with the same brush we use to add the color variation. So either a soft brush if you don't want to have any texture, a charcoal brush if you're using free brushes but want texture, or my basic texture brush if you have my illustration bundle. We're going to add a vignette effect by gently painting over the corners of the piece. So again, pretty simple, but it does really help frame everything and bring the attention to the witch. Now we're going to bring the attention to the character even more by adding lights and shadows onto the character, which is going to make it a little bit more defined in the rest of the background. So go ahead and open your character layer and create a new layer below the liner. And here we're going to start with the lights. So just rename your layer to lights just like we did for the glow of the moon, setting the blending mode of the light layer to add and probably also lowering the opacity quite a bit, probably around 30% to start with. And here, since the moon is right behind the witch and the moon is what would bring light to the witch, what you might want to do is color pick the color of the moon itself and then use that to add your lights. And here, I'm going to use my favorite highlight technique, which is outlining my outline. If you've watched literally any of my YouTube videos, you know what I'm talking about. And here, since the light source is behind our character, we're pretty much going to outline the entire character in light, and that's really going to help make it pop. But before we do that, we might want to add a few highlights on the face to really bring our character to life. And for that, I personally like to add just a simple little oval like this on each cheek. I like, I highlight the nose and then kind of a few dots on the ear as well. But otherwise, we're going to just go ahead and outline the entire character in light. So once more, feel free to pause the video here. I'm going to keep my example going in the background so you can use it as a reference. And once we're done, we're going to meet up to add the shadows.
So once you're done with your lights, go ahead and create a new layer below the lights, but above everything else, and rename it to Shadows. And here, just like we did for the vignette, we're going to use the blending mode Linear Burn, and we're also going to lower the opacity probably around 50%. And here for your shadow, I recommend using the lighter part of your sky, so probably color picking towards the bottom. And I'm personally going to keep the shadows really simple here. I'm mostly going to focus on adding them whenever I have different elements that overlap, but you could go for something more realistic if you want, so feel free to experiment. So I'm personally going to start by adding shadows behind the head, so on the hair. A bit like that. I can already tell I feel like my shadows are a little bit too dark, so I'm just going to lower the opacity of my layer even more. I'm also going to add a shadow below the hat and below this hair strand I have here on my face. I'm going to add a bit of a shadow from the face onto the neck and shoulders. I'm going to shade that arm here because it's kind of behind, so just to help the elements separate from each other. Same thing from this part of the dress. Maybe a little bit on the broom around the character. Definitely some on this back leg here. Again, just to help the different elements be separated. Nothing super fancy here. Might add a bit of a shadow as well from the dress here since it's kind of floating away from the leg it would probably cast a pretty nice shadow maybe a little bit here on the chest and in the crease kind of the crease around the waist Maybe a few lines in the hair. You can see I added some lines with light, so I might add some with shadows as well. Just to play with the texture. Maybe a little bit around the hand and the brim of the hat. And maybe a few lines on the broom as well. If you enjoyed this video and want more cartoon yourself tutorials, I highly recommend you check out this playlist because I have a bunch more for you. But before you leave, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.